it's clearly apparent that DC as a whole has been slacking compared to their main competition, Marvel. The movies are huge box office hits. Even just the cultural impact of the films is enough to show just how successful they have become. Some people say it's because the characters are better, which is a bit dumb to be honest. Some say they are able to make good movies because they're trying to do their own thing, unlike DC. That point does make a lot of sense to me, but there is another idea that comes up quite frequently. Marvel is doing better because everything is in a connected universe. I've become so annoyed with not only this idea, but with the whole movement behind people wanting everything to connect to something else and obsessing over what could possibly fit where. Don't get me wrong, having a grand narrative with a variety of characters telling their own unique stories is great, but not everything is or should be made through that lens. Sometimes smaller stories being inside larger ones can take away the freedom and potential the movie could have had. The movie Joker, better yet, most of the best Batman stories essentially take place in a world that only deals with Batman and the city of Gotham. Keeping everything contained helps center the story on the smaller moments and keeps any future developments relating to the the main characters. Instead of wondering when Green Lantern or Wonder Woman are going to show up to present a whole new problem for the Cape Crusader to tackle, I bring all this up to say that both kinds of stories can work, and people's obsession with grand interconnected narratives at times reaches the insanity of some of the most die-hard power scalers, who would fight to the end about why their favorite anime character would solo everyone when they were just asked about a recent anime release. Despite my tangent, I really like what Marvel has managed to do with their movies for the most part, but DC might finally have a foothold, that they can begin to actually form something concrete after all this time. But to understand why, let's talk about James Gunn's new show, Peacemaker. The show was amazing, with only one episode standing out as subpar. Every character was fleshed out, while the story was strong enough to keep the viewer itching for another episode. It's a redemption story done really well, a guy that was raised by a supremacist father, trying to overcome everything that was forced onto him, while tackling a grand conspiracy alongside some hilarious characters. I ended this show loving pretty much every major character in some way, even if they only existed as a side character for laughs. The villains each had such a wild presence to them, with Peacemaker's dad stealing the show for me, ignoring the final battle. It all just felt a bit rushed, which probably was true since it was the second to last episode. Somehow, most of these superhero shows as of late have felt like they needed more time, even though they're given much more time than a movie would normally have. But despite that, I was left wanting more from all these characters. It is here that DC's foothold comes in. The show has been renewed for a second season, which is awesome, but James Gunn has also expressed interest in working on other DC TV shows, which would be something special. A middle ground between a fully interconnected storyline and a completely separate narrative is something like this. Various characters that wouldn't usually have the ability to interact that could in the future find themselves alongside one another. The stories can be as different as they want, and their sole purpose is to be a closed off narrative, before worrying about how it all ties in. In. But back to Peacemaker, I see so much potential for the eventual season 2. Peacemaker being haunted by the ghost of his dad, sitting on the porch as he's grinning beside him. Peacemaker did defeat him, yet somehow, he hasn't really won. All the pain and suffering he has endured will take a long time to shake if even at all. Vigilante is funny as always, and I can imagine season 2 will be no different. The one gag that kept getting me though, is how often he survives situations. He could get shot, or at one point, even take a point blank grenade, and still find a way to make it out. I'm also curious, how Autobio's actions will impact the future. Maybe Amanda Waller will try to shut them all up in some way, which could be cool to see. Maybe even a past suicide Suicide Squad member could show up for that purpose. What did you think of Season 1? And what are your thoughts on James Gunn's future with DC properties? What do you hope we will see in Season 2? Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, subscribe. It costs nothing, and you can always unsubscribe later on if you want. I hope to see you next time.